Hi everybody! Welcome to Storytime with Michelle. I'm Michelle. Thank you so much for joining me for Story Read Aloud today. The story I have for you today is a true story about a man who was faced with a huge problem. It's called Manji Moves a Mountain. It was written by Nancy Chernin and illustrated by Danny Popovici and published by Creston Books. And thank you so much to Creston Books for giving me permission to share this story with you today. It's about Manji who lived in a poor village on one side of the mountain and he and all of the people that lived in his village had to climb a 300 foot mountain to get to the other side where they went to school and they went to work and they went to market. And he was really tired of seeing how difficult it was for everyone that lived in his town to cross this mountain every single day. So he decided to do something about it. In fact, he decided that since he couldn't move his village, well, he would have to move the mountain. Let's find out how he did that. Let's read. Manji Moves a Mountain by Nancy Chernin, illustrated by Danny Popovich and published by Creston Books. Deep in the heart of India, a mighty mountain separated two villages. On Manji's side, nothing grew. People were hungry. Children gave up walking the 40 long miles to school on the other side of the mountain. Adults groaned on the jagged long climb to plow the fields or shop at the market. On the other side, rice and wheat flowered and flourished. People's bellies were full and their pockets jangled with money. Do you see the mountains separating the two villages? Every day, Manji paused at the top of the mountain to catch his breath and gaze at the two villages. Why should some people have so much and others so little? While well, you can really see the difference between the lives lived on one side of the mountain and the other side. Manji tried to think of an answer as he made his way down the mountain to plant and harvest on the other side. If only the two villages were closer. If only the road between them were easier. If only there were a way to move the mountain. Frustrated, he picked up a stone and threw it down. Crack! He saw a sprinkle of powder. He knelt down and felt it between his fingers. That was it! Manji hurried to his hut to search for something to trade. He had nothing anyone would want except three goats. He gently looped ropes around their necks and searched until he found someone who would trade a worn hammer and chisel for them. He hurried back to the top of the mountain. He positioned the chisel. He aimed. He swung the hammer. Clink! Powdered rock and tiny chips sprayed. Over and over, Manji swung until it was too dark to see. Clink, clank, clunk. His sweaty, throbbing fingers rubbed the rough rock. He felt a dent. It was small and bumpy, but it was there. Two inches, three inches. His shoulders ached, his head pounded, but his heart was lighter. He picked his way down the mountain and across the dirt path, he tumbled into bed. Look at the constellations in the sky. Do you see the hammer? And then you see a man swinging a hammer. And over here, it looks like, well, it looks like he's making a dent into the top of the mountain. All too soon, a rooster crowed. Manji rubbed his eyes. His hands were raw with blisters. Still, he climbed the mountain. He gripped the hammer and pounded the chisel for hours. Hold, aim, swing. Then he scrambled down to hoe, water, and weed on the other side. As soon as he could, he rushed back up. Hold, aim, swing. Day after day, Manji clutched the hammer and chisel. Hold, aim, swing. Night after night, he slid dusty fingers into the hole, measuring one foot, two feet. After a week, he could crouch inside, four feet, five feet. You're crazy, people told him. A man can't change a mountain. It's there before he's born and after he dies. But Manji could see something they couldn't. The parting of the mountain into two great halves with a road in between. A road where people could get to work, 
to market, to school, even to the hospital more easily. Nothing could stop him, not words, not time, not even the mountain which sent chips and powder tumbling down his shoulders, whitening his hair. A year passed. Every day, Manji was a little stronger and the hole a little deeper and longer. Ten feet forward, twenty feet forward. Ten years passed. Still, it was too far for children to walk to school. The sick often couldn't get to the clinic in time, and the villagers spent countless hours climbing to work in the fields and shop in the markets. But Manji didn't slow down. Hold, aim, swing. He pushed forward, 30 feet forward, 50 feet forward. The sides of the hole towered over his body. After 15 years, people started to see what he had seen. Adults who had been children when he began marveled. Children who had never known a time when he wasn't striking the mountain watched in awe. 100 feet forward, 200 feet forward. Now each time he returned to his task, Manji could see that helping hands had made the hole a little longer than he'd left it. He found food waiting for him too. Baskets of warm roti dripping with melted ghee, tins of spicy dal tickled his nose. Once he unwrapped a cloth to find a shiny new hammer and chisel glinting in the sun. How nice. People are coming to help him and to leave him food. By the 22nd year, whispers swept through both villages. Every day, more people gathered. Parents lifted little ones on their shoulders so they could see the other side. They wondered if this would be the day. Hold, aim, swing. Men, women, children held their breath. Manji could hear his heart beating as loudly as the hammer hitting the rock. Hold, aim, swing. Swoosh! Where once a mighty mountain stood, there was nothing but open space and broken rocks. He did it! Manji looked from one village to the other, but for the first time, there weren't two villages. There was just one, sharing water, hopes, dreams, and a man who had moved a mountain. The end. Wow, Manji did it. He moved that mountain. This story is about dedication, persistence, determination to make a life better for his family and for his neighbors. Honestly, Manji is such an inspiration to all of us to really think about new and creative ways that we can help each other and make life easier for one another. Well. I hope you enjoyed Manji Moves the Mountain as much as I did. I'd love to connect with you and talk about the book. So join me on Facebook at Storytime with Michelle Book Club and let's talk about Manji. I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, happy reading.